Okay, this is the notes for section 6.3, Angles Inscribed in Circles. If you haven't done so already, please stop the video at this time and read the section before going on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define what an inscribed angle is. And here's the actual official definition, and we'll, we'll talk about it from there. It's an, an angle is an inscribed angle in a circle, if and only if the angle's vertex is on the circle, and each of the angle sides intersect the circle at a point other than the vertex point. Okay, so I have a a, uh, a look at a, a um, inscribed angle down here, where angle A or B A M. Okay, that angle is an inscribed angle. Okay, B A M. Notice how the vertex A is on the circle. And both B and M are also on the circle and not at point A. Okay? So it takes the circle and divides it into two arcs, really. This arc, this major arc, B, A, M, going all the way around. And the minor arc, B, M. Okay? Now, an angle intercepts an arc, forming, forming an intercepted arc. So this arc, B, M, is the intercepted arc. Okay. If the arc intercept, intercept for its endpoints lies in the interior of the angle. Notice how this arc, BM here, is completely inside of the, of the um, angle BAM. Okay? Okay, so as I look at number one, name three inscribed angles. I've named three of them here. Those are certainly not the only three. There's a lot of inscribed angles. What's key about the inscribed angles is the vertex point has to be either A, B, C, or D. So it's got to be one of the points that are on the circle. And then you've got to, you must name it with three points because every one of those vertex points has several angles in them. So really, as long as you name it uh, with three points and, and, and um, the three points should all be on the circle, so A, B, C, and D. Uh, you should be fine with those inscribed angles. Name the central angles. Remember what central angles are. Central angles are any angle that has a, a, a vertex at the center point. So as long as O is your vertex point, you would have a central angle. So I've named three of them here, but there are, there are several more that you could name um, as well. And then finally, number three, it says name the arc intercepted by ABC. So here's angle ABC right here. A, B, C. So that means that the arc that would be intercepted by that would be this arc right here. And that whole arc, that major arc. So I could call that arc ADC, or I could call it CDA. But you need to have those two endpoints and then one point in between because it's greater than 180 degrees. Okay, now that we've established what an inscribed angle is, that we want to we want to find out what's unique about it and what really de what describes the uniqueness of the inscribed angle is the inscribed angle theorem. And here's what it says. It says the measure of an angle inscribed in a circle, so any inscribed angle, is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay? So what that means is that any time I'm looking at an intercepted arc, okay, the measure of that arc will be twi twice the measure of the angle, or you can also say the measure of the angle will be half the measure of the arc. So as I look at the example that we had here um, above, this angle here, this angle A, has to be e equal to half of the arc B M. Okay. Okay, a, a direct result of the inscribed angle theorem is is what we call Thales' theorem, named after a famous early mathematician. And it just says, if an inscribed angle intercepts a semicircle, then the angle is a right angle. So anytime that when we look at 
the the inscribed angle if it it intercepts the arc in such a way that it's a semicircle that angle will have to be a right angle which would make sense because it's got to be half of the 180 degrees so that's where we're getting that right angle from <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at example four here then. It says um, we want to find the measure of angle C from this drawing. Well, to do that, although we're not given any measures of angles there, we can still find the measure of its angle by looking at the measures of the arc. So if arc AC is 112 and arc BC is 164, I can subtract those two values from 360 degrees, which is the total measure of the arcs all the way around the circle. If I do that, I know that arc BA here is 84. Okay. Well, I also know that the measure of angle C has to be equal to 1 half of 84. Therefore, the measure of angle C would have to be 42 degrees. Okay. At this time, if you could pause the video and see if you can answer number 5, and then go ahead and turn the video back on, and, and I'll do number 5 for you. Okay, so as I look at number five then, I know that uh, if I want to find the measure of arc WTS, arc WTS would be this arc right here, starting at W, going through T and ending at S. So that arc, it must be, it's the intercepted arc of this angle, WES. Therefore, the measure of that arc has to be two times the measure of this angle because I know that the measure of the angle is half the measure of the arc. Okay? So if I take these two values and add them together, that will give me the measure of angle WES. Okay? And therefore, if that's the measure of WES, um, I can take that number times 2, 95 times 2, which gives me 190, and that will give me the measure of the arc that I'm looking for. Okay, so number six says uh, eight points in a circle equally spaced to form congruent arcs are connected to form an octagon. What is the measure of each interior angle of the octagon? Well, um, if, if we if we take if attack this problem from an inscribed angle point of view if I look at any one of the angles, so for instance if I look at this angle A, I know that the measure of that angle is going to be equal to half the measure of the the inscribed the inscribed arc. So here's the arc B, C, all the way around to H. So the measure of angle A is going to be half of that measure. Well I know that each one of these arcs, it doesn't matter, I picked B, C, each one of them would be equal to 360 degrees divided by 8 because we said that these points were evenly um, distributed around the circle. Therefore, each one of these arcs would be 45 degrees. Now, if each one of them is 45 degrees, to find the, the arc uh, B all the way around H, I'm going to take 45 times 6, which is equal to 270 degrees. Therefore, the measure of that angle, angle A, is 1 half times 270, which is 135. Therefore, the measure of any one of these angles in here would be 135 degrees. <laughs>